everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'd like to show you this very easy, super beginner friendly wildflower abstract that I'm going to be just using with palette knives. Now this is going to be my best beginner palette knife instructional pick, uh, video. You're going to love it. We're going to go over every step. You're going to be amazed at how beginner friendly palette knives actually are. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. In an effort to make this project very easy for you, he's going to be tracking me with a multitude. I mean, I'm not even counting them out now. A multitude of cameras that zoom in and get in the action. So you can see how I load the knife. So you can understand the techniques happening. We're going to do direct application. If you've been seeing that online and you're excited about that, I'm going to show you how you can be free and artistic with direct paint tube application. I'm going to show you how to use the different knives. And I'm going to make this fun for you. And I cannot wait to see your end result when we're done with this project together. You guys ready to get into it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's hop on in. Boom. All right. So right here, I am going to be taking aside my beautiful example that I did with a bazillion D colors and pulling out my nine by 12 surface. This is an art board. You might be wondering, is an art board better or is a canvas better for palette knives? Let me very quickly answer that for you. Neither. Art boards give you a smooth uh, scraping surface. You get a very rigid surface, which can be nice in sharp applications. Whereas canvases give you a little bounce back and can reduce fatigue. That's just the difference. I have on here a couple of wishes like we like to do on the channel to put some positivity out in the universe. Um, Debbie uh, is really hoping that some doctors and healers are going to come in and improve <laughs> where are you going, babe? I found all the wrong and improve buttons. her perspective and, and, her, and, and her husband's outcome. So we're looking for that. Um, strength for Caroline, who's going through loss. Catherine is looking for some really amazing healers and hope and a really good outcome for her brother. And we're really hoping that because they've been in it and a lot of support and love for the family so that they're being lifted up. And then Stephanie is wishing to be in a cycle of joy, contentment, and peace. And she's also wishing that for all of you as well. So I think those are lovely wishes. Over here, I have these colors out. If you check the description below, every color is listed. I have several plops of titanium white and you're gonna see our first recipe laid out, which is a plop of titanium white, two phthalo blues, and one phthalo green. And then you'll notice I have two more titanium whites. Those are gonna come into play. We're gonna be doing some direct application of dioxazine purple and phthalo blue at the bottom of the canvas. So you guys ready to get started? I think it's gonna be super easy. Get your, wait, okay. So <laughs> we're gonna have to practice this. Get your long spatula palette knife out. This is the long trowel with a mild crank on it. If you wanna know more about this, I do have a bunch of videos just specifically on all the types of palette knife info that you could need. I'm gonna bring this over to my surface so I'm ready. Now, even though this is gonna be my bottom and my dark, I am on an easel and there's this edge here that can get in my way. So what I will do, is turn my canvas upside down so that when I put out my direct paint, it is going to be uh, easier for me to get to. And so you're gonna have fun. We're gonna be just like the artist online. We're gonna go plop, 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 plop. That's not too bad. I mean, we can handle that, right? To the side. And let's put in some blue here between. Look at that. Blue. And then maybe a little bit of blue right here. That's not too bad, is it? Mm -hmm. and, and fun. Look how much fun we're having. So on your knife, we're going to be scraping particular directions and we're gonna be using one or another edge of the knife in a dominant way. So if I'm trying to fill in an area, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a slight angle and I'm gonna scrape down and come back up. Can you see how I'm doing that? I'm scraping down and coming back up. And I'm scraping harder on the right side of my knife. My uh, pressure, is actually, this is what this is like. This is like buttering uh, a French bread or a toasted piece of bread with warm butter or also maybe a uh, nice soft peanut butter, not chunky, nice soft peanut butter on a toasted piece of bread. So that's about the, that's the kind of technique that we're doing here. It's a spreading technique. You've probably done this. That's a very dark, dark. Yes, we want a very dark, dark color at the bottom of our floral. It's and very, it almost, dis I had to bring the camera up almost to see the differences between the blues there. Yeah, and, and, and it's because we're trying to make this deep, almost indigo experience. Now I'm going to come through with my knife and you can see I am touching all those surfaces. 
to make sure that the surface is covered underneath, right? And so if I, if I, like there, you can see I got that. So we're just smoothing that out. We're not going to change directions on that. That's really nice what we have there. Here's a hot tip. I've got baby wipes out. You can use paper towels. I'm going to wipe my knife off right here and put this aside. Now mix all of these together. First mix your two bits of phthalo blue to a bit of your phthalo green. This is going to be so fun. And now add your white and you're going to see a turquoise come into being here. You see your turquoise? Oh, yeah. We're going to kind of thoroughly mix this, but not too much. It can still have some marbling. See? Oh, yeah. And you're going to come here and notice that this paint is loaded, kind of rolled. If you saw it, I scraped going from the right-hand side towards the left, and it rolls that bead up. That's how we load a palette knife. And to offload it, I'm going to just come here and come across and touch this off. Now, I'm going to grab as much of this as I can. And I'm going to begin to mix these together. And how I mix is I'll come back up into the dark color and you can come forward and backwards into it. But look, we're going to just pull down. We're going to pull down. See how we're doing? We're doing a nice pull down. And then let's come back into the blue. See how we're working it back up into the blue and how it kind of blends. This is a very light look. We're coming along, skimming along lightly and letting the knife skip. So can you see the angle of how it's almost like flush to the surface with just a bit of a hint of a lift? Leaving lots of stuff underneath to show through dark. You can even come another way. Look making those marks be more interesting and more fascinating for what we're doing. Now, I'm going to take a bunch of this and let's get some white into it. Look at that. I've just made a shade lighter, haven't I? Yeah. I like how the, how the white just brings out so much of the color. And I'm going to come right here with that lighter blue look at that so now we're making like this fun gradation now you guys might guess that in a minute i'm going to come back up into the color i had before see how i'm doing coming across spreading my peanut butter spreading my butter where i need to fill in the surface i just put a deeper press and that's how i get it to cover the white canvas can you guys see that deeper press yeah white canvas is getting covered you're just sort of squishing it in there. Yes. Now I've got a little bit on my knife and there's still a little bit on my glass palette. To not have trouble with my lip down here, what am I going to have to do? I have to flip it over. Now, scrape, scrape, scrape. See? A lot of paint here, isn't it? A lot of people tell me, well, palette knives use up a lot of paint. That's true. But as long as you're working while the paint's still wet, they waste very little. So there we go. We're going to make a nice lighter color. Notice how I haven't had to put any extra paint out. And it's just given me a nice gradation. I didn't have to work at it very hard. It was just following that formula. All right. Look at that nice load. Boom. See the scrape? Let's come here at the top. And let's frost. The rest of our canvas, let's spread our peanut butter, spread our butter on our French bread, whatever you're familiar with, right? You've done this. You've done this. This is easier than grape jelly on white bread. If you've ever dealt with grape jelly on white bread, you're already tougher than anything that's ever going to happen to you with a palette knife. Just say. You know, your your bakery analogies are strong today <laughs> they are strong today well they kind of apply that you know if you frosted a cake if you've spread peanut butter if you've dealt with warm butter you're using a lot of those same skills and artist knives are not so dissimilar right i'm going to come across here and maybe make a little bit of an angle can you guys see the angle mm -hmm. just stroking from the upper right to the left and i'm letting a little stuff go down that's about how much paint is left on my knife i'd say i used up 
quite a lot of this, wouldn't you? Yeah. Look at that. The color. I'm pulling that up there. The trick about the palette knives. It's really nice. Isn't that beautiful? The trick about the palette knives, guys, is that it's real easy to get anxious about your version of the palette knife, to feel that what you're offering is somehow not as good as what I'm doing or another artist because palette knives are a little bit about not so much having control. Now I'm going to put out a little of this as well. I'm going to put out a little green and let's put out two yellow and probably maybe a white. There we go, but a small white. So the first mix that I'm going to do, I'm going to come right here, still using this one knife. And I'll mix those together because we're going to go scraffito, which scraffito, <laughs> what is which, scraffito <laughs> is the art word for saying that I'm a scrape off or remove paint. It's one of my favorites. And I like to say the word a lot when I'm doing it. So mm. look at that. I've just mixed myself a nice dark green. But while I'm here, I'm going to wipe off on my towel and let's come here from the bottom and make little scratch lines. Look at this. I'm using just a knife and I'm scraping through. Scraffito. Now, if you had a whole bunch of extra student paints and you were oh, upgrading. This is so good. If you're trying to use up a brand of paint, use them up here. If you're like, man, I want to upgrade. <laughs> experimental with your. Yeah, this is a good place, I think, actually, often for student paints. I think that that's a good place for student paints. Now, again, because the lip of my canvas is a problem, I'm going to very carefully turn this over. And I'm turning it over carefully because, you know, paint. Mm. A lot of times people will dry between applications, but for this one, we really don't have to in any way. Now, let's load up our knife. See this? This is called a bead. Let me show you that again. I'm going to wipe it and show you again. When you're trying to load a thin line bead, you come in and you scrape through your paint. See that bead? Yeah. Then you're going to take it over here and you're going to tap it, just the edge of the knife. See that edge? In different angles. Look at those little angles. Mm. So easy. You've seen this online and you thought, wow, how did that happen? This is how that happened. You can do this. You can be expressive in this way. I'm just touching, look at me, just touching the edge of the knife to the canvas. Be like, I have knife skills. You have. And notice that I changed the angle. That's giving me that effect of like, ooh, maybe there's some plants here. Maybe there's some flowers here. Sometimes I change hands if I'm on the easel and I'm trying to capture film footage. <laughs> but mostly what I would do is change my uh, positioning of my canvas. You can move the canvas around. We're good. I'm good. I'm good. I have so I'm kind many of in the angles. zone right now. I know. I'm You're sort of feeling going. the zone. All right, let's keep loading and let's offload some more little twiggly bits. Look at these little twiggly bits, right? They're wonderful, aren't they? And can you see how they get almost hair fine? This is just a plastic palette knife. These are my least expensive brushes that I have. They're a few dollars, but look, they're still super high performance. Now, are there wonderful palette knives? Yes. Who has the best? Probably Holbein, <laughs> to be real honest. Because they have that uh, samurai sword steel mm. uh, palette yeah. knife, which yeah, is so good. Folded. I don't know where you're, where you're going sometimes. But that's overkill for us. That's like appropriate for my mother. <laughs> but for us, we're just having a little bit of fun. Now I'm going to come over here. I need a very bright green. And I'm going to take that amount of green and I'm going to start into my yellow. Because I can always add more, can't I? And maybe I'll get a little white to even pull it up more. See this bright green, spring green color? I'm mixing. I can always get a middle green from there, but I think I'm going to just stick it right here. I got my bead. I'm going to wipe my knife to make sure that my bead is very clean. So when I load it, I can see it. Look, that's a nice bead. Look at that bead coming out. How easy is this? That's really cool. Look at that. That's all we did. We got right in there. You can see that happening. You guys are up on the palette. You can see how it's happening. You know, sometimes when these go through real fast, it's real hard to see how it was constructed. But very often, things are easier to construct than they seem. Right? 
easier to construct than they seem. And there's so much kind of painting you can do with palette knife. It is a wonderful tool. I'm getting a little bit happy. Um, another way that I can kind of put in some interesting marks is you, I've got my bead, but I'm going to do a cool thing here. You guys ready? I'm going to tap my knife in a little bit further and I'm going to pull back a couple places. So it just leaves a little bit of a print. See that? Oh, kind of like a leaf print. Kind of like a leaf print. Similar load, but just a little more leaf printy. So similar, but gives some of that little green sparkle that we might want. Oh, that's fun. So now that's all of our leaves. That's all we had to do for that. Let's turn it around and be in awe at how much it looks like we have little bits of grass and little bits of awesomeness. Now, I'm going to put out uh, one pink and then I'm going to put another pink over here. Over here, I'm going to add just a little bit of cad red light. And here, I think I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow. And let's put out one small smidge, 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 smidge of pink, right? Like this. And now let's start putting out the white. So we definitely have a white. We're going to mix those together. And then I'm going to come here and go white, white, maybe some white over here. So I have enough. You have okay? palette parkour happening. Palette parkour. Boom, boom, boom. But we'll get into each little mix as we go, right? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make like kind of a nice pink here, right? It's very light, distant pink. Doom, doom, doom. Doom, 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 doom. That's a nice middle pink. Fun stuff to work with. And let's come here and make another slightly lighter pink. Middle pink. Mm-hmm. That's a hobbit's favorite pink. Middle pink. Yes, it's much like middle earth. Isn't that a nice light, light pink? So we have two distinctive pinks. We'll begin with the lightest. And what you're gonna, I'm gonna wipe this off so you can really see this. Baby wipe, come here, and this is a tip load. See how it's loaded just on the tip of the rounded blade. And then I'm gonna make a little touch, little touch, little touch, little touch. Boop, boop, boop. Little touch, little touch, little touch, little touch. Some touches are so light, it's like a butterfly kissed it. Hey, these little peaks, I'm zooming in there on some of those little peaks. Yeah, zoom in on some of those little peaks. They're wonderful. Let's take some, let's make some little, these are little distant bits. It's okay if some green gets on there. So you'd never want to worry if some of your underpainting gets in because what that does is create a slight blend in the palette experience, right? Some, these are the little distant far ones. So I'm just barely touching and they're going to they're gonna appear far away and just beautiful. And then I'm going to go right into my darker pink and make some stronger marks. See, those are stronger marks. Put some different little flowers up on there. Little flowers. You can see them. If you need to offload, you just press down and reload onto your tool. So we're going to just build up those pinks. Look at us go. Layering the pinks. In the music video I did of this, I used many, many different colors and some very expensive pigments and uh, black light pigments. So if you really like those, you can find the list of that the color set and get those. And once you know the technique, you can absolutely get into it. Now let's mix some of this together. This is going to be bright. And it's got a little bit of yellow into it. And I'm worried too much yellow. That looks a little too orange to me. Yeah. All I do to fix that is put out one more pink and then just fold about half of this into that. There we go. That's much more than pink I'm looking for in one white. And there we go. Bright, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. And you can even grab what you had over there so you're not wasting any paint. Mix it in there. Yep, yeah, mix it in. You don't have to waste it. You're good. Now, as I come forward with darker colors, I'm going to make these spots see bigger. And that's kind of like a little bit of perspective. So if I'm trying to say a bit of something is far away, I just go like that. But if I'm trying to say something is close and brighter, I might make it bigger. We have a little bit up there. See, they just touch up there. We're just touching. Boop. Little flower. 
what you're doing is you're just putting little flowers and they're blooming. Are your flowers blooming? Boop, boop, boop. We're almost done, guys. Wow. So if you want the flowers to appear bigger, here, let's make sure we loaded mostly on the tip. And come here. See that little that little mark? You Boom. You could have submitted a squish. Yeah, let me show it again. A roundy squish. Roundy squish. So you see the load on the tip. Press in, roundy squish. Fun stuff, isn't it? Now notice that I sometimes control my knife by placing my finger here. Makes your have more firmer control, huh? Yep. So I can get more of a whoa moment. These are looking pretty good. These little flowers are pretty gorgeous. I like them. Let's get into our wow mix, which oh. is our quinacridone, magenta, and our cad oh, red. Oh, it is wowed up there. Light. Quite bright, isn't it? I'm going to add a smidge, smidge of white to it carefully because I don't want to take it out of its saturation. I want it to stay very saturated. And I think we're going to put just a little more Quinn and a little more of the CAD red light just to brighten it up even more. There we go. Oh, that's very bright. Do you see how bright that is? I do. And it's darker. It's our darkest value. So we're going to load up and let's put in some big focal flowers right there. Oh, yeah. A little bit coming up, don't they? I'd like some darker coming up here and maybe a little row. Uh, but then a big one right there. Big one right there. Balance it out, right? Maybe I move my angle up and that gives me a nice little little moment. Oh. Move your knife around, offload, reload as you need to. Oh, this this is like a little hole there, so I'm going to add some paint right there because I don't want to have any holes. I'm making a little wildflower field. You can go through and grab any of your leftover oh, paint that you want. I'll have to back out there and take yeah, a look at just, that. You can always grab leftover paint, you know, and you can see that I can just put in some distant flowers in there. I really think we're there, guys. Mm. Now, <laughs> signing. <laughs> hmm. Where to sign? I don't have a I don't have a brush for signing. Oh, well, so we'll just imagine that I have one. I can shoot. I can fix that. Actually, I, ha I have one over there. If I'm allowed to run off camera real fast. Okay, there it is. That's uh no signing brush. I've got one. <clears throat> so I just need a small detail brush that I can sign with, and I think in this particular case I'm going to put out a little of my white not too much and i'm gonna load right up on my brush and i'll come right here and just in the corner sign right into that wet paint you can see it all blends in you could also a lot of palette knife artists like to scrape or scruffito sign they like the white flowers they Jessica, do jessica says she, she likes the white flowers the best so fun right Mm-hmm. All right. We did Listen. this pretty fast. It's like under 25 minutes. Palette knives. Don't be afraid of them. I'm going to turn to the front. Okay. Uh, that one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, guys. Sometimes artist stuff seems really difficult and challenging and mysterious. I'm going to keep bringing lessons like this to you because I know if it's explained to you, you can do it yourself. And I want you to have the fun in your artistic endeavors. I want you to spread out peanut butter palette knife techniques and be like, I can't do it. So I'm going to keep doing this. I feel like I really explained it. Be sure and check the iCards. Check the website because there's more videos there you might like all about palette knife stuff. I want to thank John for helping me with the show today. I want to thank you for coming. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. I don't want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.